all hits all the time. We are family. Max Scherzer, double digit K's. We're busting ours. Kick yours. Fun to watch. Minus 15. Respect all, fear none. Into the upper deck. Intensity is not a Oh, mercy. Five, four, three, two, one. It's the calm before the storm here at Nationals Park as we get ready for the NL wildcard game tomorrow night between the Nationals and the Brewers. Welcome into Mass and All Access, brought to you by your local authorized Mercedes-Benz dealers. We've got full coverage from this workout day, the day before the wildcard game. Workout was moved inside because of the rain, but don't worry, we've got coverage. We've got Davey Martinez talking earlier, Mike Rizzo, the GM, Trey Turner, but we're going to kick off our show here with the starter for tomorrow's game, Max Scherzer. Uh, it was just a confusing injury um, because there was times where I could uh, recover and get back to 100% and go out there and pitch in a game, um, and I, I could uh, actually do damage to myself. And so that's what the most confusing part about the whole thing was, uh, knowing when I was actually truly 100%. Um, but it was something you just got to take in stride, learn from it, and understand uh, what it was, and then make adjustments around it. Uh, there will be more, bigger adjustments really in the offseason programs to address that than anything in season. Jesse? Max, you spent like the last five or so weeks building up um, mm -hmm. pitch count, doing certain things. Is there anything you haven't done yet going into this game that like a box you haven't checked that you could tomorrow night that you sort of don't really know how your body will respond? No. I mean, I, I, I put myself in this position to be ready to be able to, to give whatever I need to give to the team tomorrow. Um, I, I, you know, I've been up to 100 pitches a couple times now, or at least right there. Um, my arms responded. I feel like I can pitch, I can execute pitches that deep in the game. Um, you know, sometimes that's a little learning curve as you're getting back into it. Uh, still fine to be able to execute that deep into a game. Uh, I feel like I'm able to do that now. So tomorrow, whatever um, Davey, however Davey will let me pitch, I'll pitch. Max, you guys have never gone into the playoffs in this situation, playing this game on a really hot streak. How do you feel about the way you've played over the last couple of weeks? And does that impact? Um, the postseason, or could it? I hope it does. Um, we'll find out tomorrow night. Uh, the Brewers have been playing well, playing uh, good baseball as well. So we have two good teams playing bit ball tomorrow night with everything on the line. Max, you've been part of playoff teams before. You've been part of a lot of good teams. What about this team and this group do you think makes it unique and, and different than in other teams that you've played on? Um, we have we really can do a lot of different things uh, well off well as our team um, pitching, hitting, defense, base running, speed, power. Uh, we have a little bit of everything, um, and so that's why you know I feel like we can compete with anybody in this league, uh, given that uh, what we can do on the ball field. Uh, it's just going to take a heck of an effort tomorrow night to get it done. Pedro, Max Davy was just in here and he talked about how. Besides you, Strasburg's available, Corbin's available. Now in Detroit, you came out of the bullpen once in the playoffs against mm -hmm. Oakland. What is that like for those guys when you're a starter all year and all of a sudden, boom? Uh, it's really in your uh, routine of how long it takes for you to get ready to be able to get into the game. Um, so for every guy, it's, it's individual uh, of what you have to do to get yourself ready to be able to do that. Um, I mean, you just got to simulate as best as you can your normal routine and uh, your normal warm-up. And, hey, you're in a postseason game. Uh, everything's on the line. So I've been in that situation. Uh, I've had some success, had, you know, had some failures as well. Um, it, it's just about going out there and just trusting your stuff and believing what you got can beat the other guy. Max, you said during this stretch after you got off the injured list that you were – you realize you didn't have to throw 96, 97, that you could, do, you could depend on your stuff and you could depend on pitching. I just wonder in a one game elimination, do you stick with that idea? Do you go, it's one game, I gotta let it all out for as long as I can, or is that something you just don't know till you get on the mound? It's a little bit of everything. I mean, it's just working with your catcher, working with the scouting report, working with your instincts, and just going out there and execute pitches. Uh, try to. Put the best pitch in the best spot possible to continue to uh, collect outs. I mean, that's the name of the game. Jamal? 
Uh, you've pitched in two game five elimination games in this building. What stands out to you about them when you think about them? And what kind of, uh, what, do you, what do you look for most to about pitching tomorrow? I mean, the atmosphere is going to be intense. Um, you know, the Nats fans have really come out and, and you know, game against the Dodgers. I mean, the crowd was absolutely nuts for those game and against the Cubs. So, um, you know, we've had heartbreaks in both those games. Um, you know, hopefully tomorrow is different. What stands out to you when you think of the fifth inning against the Cubs? That was one of the craziest innings in MLB history. A lot of odd things happened, and you guys were really close to closing out that inning very soon. When you think back to it, what stands out? The dumbest one in baseball that you can strike out and still get first base. So that was Max Scherzer earlier today, and now I'm joined by Mark Zuckerman of MassInSports.com. Mark, it is a little bit rainy out here today, cloud coverage, and that's why they moved this workout inside. So unfortunately, we didn't get to watch any of it. Uh, but it was a productive day. We learned a lot about yeah. the Nationals and how they plan to uh, approach the wild card game tomorrow. Obviously, we knew coming into this that Max Scherzer was going to be the starter. He did struggle a little bit in September. That's no secret. Had an ERA over five in September. But it sounded like in hearing what Davey Martinez said and hearing what Mike Rizzo said, this decision to start Max was made a while ago. Yeah, I think all along they tried to map that out for him to be able to pitch in this game. They wanted to have Strasburg lined up as well in case it came to that, and in case they needed to play a game 162 that mattered or a game 163 that mattered, and maybe Max Scherzer would have pitched that. But there's a reason he is the ace of this team. He's a three-time Cy Young Award winner. I'm not saying there wasn't a valid argument for Strasburg. He was very consistent uh, all season long and very good down the stretch. The thing I'd say about Max is in those last few starts, I know the numbers – on paper don't look as great. When you watched him pitch though, I thought he looked like his old dominant self. And each of those games came down to a couple of key moments, a couple of surprise home runs in some cases. You know, Juan Soto lost a ball in the sun in St. Louis that cost him a whole bunch of pitches and, and extended that inning. I think Max is pretty close to the real Max. That doesn't mean he's gonna be great tomorrow night, but I think for all he went through this year, he is close to 100% max, and you can tell he's had that game face on today. That He was not joking around yeah. with us. He was very serious in his answers. Like He has been focused on this for a long time. He knows the history of this organization. He knows he was a part of the last winner-take-all game here out of the bullpen. It did not go well. He wants to change that narrative, and uh, maybe he comes out and, and throws lights out tomorrow. I think that's in his mindset. That's what he's going to do. He wants to change the narrative, and I think he wants to change that drop third strike rule as well. Yeah, oh, he was some, pretty clear about that one. Huh? Got, yeah. got some strong opinions on that as well. The other big news coming out of the Davey Martinez press conference, which you will hear a little bit later on, is that Kurt Suzuki will be the other half of that battery with Max Scherzer. He has been the better hitter, even though Jan Gomes has kind of come on as of late. But Suzuki battling back. He now is fully healthy and they expect him to be the starter, but that also gives them a great option having Jan Gomes, a better hitting Jan Gomes, to come off the bench. Yeah, look, what Gomes did over the last month I think is huge because it does now allow him to not feel like he has to ride one guy. He can play either one and use the other one as a pinch hitter off the bench. Suzuki passed all the tests that he needed to. It didn't really have to throw out a runner. Uh, he, he made one sort of like pickoff move to, to first base. There's always going to be that little bit of fear. Look, he's not a great thrower even if the elbow is healthy. That would be a concern. I don't think it's as big a problem tomorrow night. The Brewers don't run a lot. The guys who do run are Christian Yelich, who's not playing, Ryan Braun and Lorenzo Cain, who may or may not play, and if they do, they're probably banged up. So that maybe helps a little bit as far as concern about the running game. What Suzuki gives to them at the plate, just a bigger threat, and if he's hitting seventh in that lineup behind all those other guys, there's going to be a lot of opportunities for him to drive and run. So I think that's number one. And number two, he really worked with Max the most over the course of the season. They have a very good rapport with each other. Uh, they kind of know their minds are in sync about what each other wants to do. Max did fine with Gomes behind the plate. I think he would do fine, but this is the preference on both sides, I believe. Uh, and so I think it's important for them that Suzuki is available and, and will catch this game. And we know that the Nationals have relied heavily on that starting rotation. It's what's gotten them to that yeah. to this point. Davey Martinez said it's no secret. They're the guys that we've been relying on. Milwaukee on the other side, a radically different approach to team building. They don't emphasize starting pitching. They go with the bullpen. It's going to be an interesting clash of ideals and team building here at Nationals Park. Yeah, if there's one thing that I'll say with certainty about tomorrow night's game, it's going to be a long game <laughs> because there's going to be a lot of pitching changes on the Milwaukee side. Sorry, if you're trying to ride Metro home, you may be out of luck <laughs> because this game's going to go way past, I think, that point. Uh, this is what their strategy is. They used it really well last year. They got all the way to Game 7 of the NLCS. They understand that's what their personnel is. They don't have that ace. They don't have two, three great starting pitchers. 
So they try to get whatever they can out of them, and they say, hey, we're going to match up the rest of the way. Let's get one really good inning from a good reliever who throws hard, and then go to the next guy. And if that works for them, that's great. Now, the Nationals, the personnel they have, it's the exact opposite. They have three, maybe even four really good uh, top of the front line starting pitchers. It's more of the old school way of, of going about this. So they said, hey, that's our strength. Let's play to our strength. And that's how they're going to do it. So it's two very contrasting styles. We'll see how it works. If you're the Nationals, to me, the hardest aspect of it is you never really get a feel for one of these pitchers. Let's say they only face Woodruff for one time through the order. Maybe a couple guys see him a second time. You start, start to figure him out, and now you're facing somebody else. So that can complicate matters. Uh, for them. Uh, so just because it's going to be a lot of names that you maybe haven't heard of as much that don't jump off the page as, you know, getting Cy Young votes and all that kind of thing, don't be surprised if the Brewers pitch a good game tomorrow. They've shown that they, this can be an effective weapon, especially in October. Should be a great matchup tomorrow, and you can follow him at Mark Zuckerman on Twitter and, of course, on MassInSports.com for coverage throughout the game tomorrow. Mark, thanks so much. All right, Paul, let's do it. And you heard Davey Martinez. We mentioned him earlier. He said all starters are going to be on the table for tomorrow. All options are on the table, all hands on deck. He talked about that earlier today with the media. I just, you know, I, I, look, I, I watched Max pitch his last few outings um and he, he built up his pitch count he felt good every outing he's he's been out i watched we watched his bullpen and monitor him um he's, he's felt good the other day he threw an unbelievable bullpen um one of the better ones i've seen so um he's ready to go you know and uh, uh we're fortunate to have a max scherzer um pitch in the wild card game so it should be a lot of fun davy that's uh right, no you're good Barry. Okay. um you do have Steven Strasburg available as well. How do you have a plan? How many hitters Max will face? How many innings? And, and is Steven the first guy to piggyback? Yeah, Steve, I mean Steven's going to be available. He's on he's on his regular rest. He's, he's threw, he threw his bullpen like he would normally. So um, yeah, he'll be good to go. You know, it's funny because I brought Steven into my office and talked to him um, and asked asked him if he'd be willing to come out of the bullpen. His response was, "I've closed before." Um, in college, so he said, "I'm ready to do whatever you ask me to do." Our model all year has been going one and zero, and I'm ready to go one and zero come Tuesday. So whatever you need me for, I'm good for. So, um, with that being said, you know we have Steven. We also have Corbin. We'll be ready. Uh, so, um, you know, so it's, it's one game. We got to win this game. So everybody's going to be ready, ready uh, whenever they're called upon. Tom, then Brittany. I was wondering what you make of the Brewers. They were way out at the start of September, then got red hot, lost Yelich along the way, and now Braun and Kane are hurt. I mean, what do you think you're going to be facing tomorrow night in them? We're going to face a good opponent. I mean, they're a good team. I mean, they can beat you in many ways. Um, a testament to how they play. I mean, they lost one of their best players, and they roll out a 20-4 and four to finish you know, to finish the season. So, um you know, they, they got guys that stepped up and played really well over the last strip month or so. So um, we just got to be ready. You know, my my focus, and I said this all year, is it's about us, the Washington Nationals. I focus on our team. Um, if we if we go up, come out and play the kind of baseball we're capable of playing, um, we should be we should be okay. You know, we should we should come out on top. So let's just I just want to focus on us. All things being equal, uh, in terms of Max starting. Do you think that there was an expectation among his teammates that he would be the one who would take the ball? I think I think his teammates didn't ma for me it, it didn't matter if it was him or Strasburg. I really don't. I mean, they appreciate them both um, the same. Uh, for me, it was about knowing that Max is, was ready. You know, he said a week off. Um, he threw well. Uh, his last outing came up to me, and he, he wanted to go back out and throw 120 pitches. So that only tells me that he feels strong and everything's back to normal. So um, we got backs for the wild card game to start. You know, how long he goes will depend on how well, how well he's pitching and how well we're doing. So um, we'll go from there. David, two things. One, do you anticipate Kurt Suzuki being available tomorrow? Yeah, that starting lineup? Kurt Suzuki will be available. He feels good. There was no issues. Um, he fired a ball yesterday uh, to first base, and uh, he said he felt great. Didn't feel nothing at all. So, uh, yeah, he'll, he'll definitely be available, and he'll catch catch Max tomorrow. And when you look at Corbin, does he kind of, for you, become that situational lefty or a, a second guy, I guess, 
so that you can have Doolittle in the later innings? I mean, how do you envision using Corbin if you know in a perfect scenario? Yeah, well, we'll um, what what I, what I like to do, what I'll try to do is just see how the game goes and then match up accordingly, uh, and you know, and just try to make those in-game situations. Um, but Corbin's, like I said, he's ready to go whenever we need him. Uh, he'll be ready from the first inning on if we need him. So um, we just have to play the game out and see where we're at. Uh, I've asked you this, some version of this question before, but uh, just the difference between how you and the Brewers are going to kind of approach this game, where they're going to throw a bunch of pitchers kind of to try to get through the game, and you guys, if, if everything goes well, would you know, ideally get five, six, seven innings for Max. Um, just why does that strategy still kind of work for you guys, the, the, the investment in starting pitchers, and do you think still kind of going forward, like what gives you confidence that you'll be able to kind of continue to do that? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's really no secret why we're here. I mean, um, uh, our starting pitchers have pitched well all year long. We counted on them to pitch well and keep us in ball games. I, I think nothing changes right now. Um, I know it's just one game, but you're you're hoping that your starting pitcher, which is Max, can go out there and throw six, seven innings, uh, you know, and then and then and then we'll decide what we want to do after that. But uh, nothing changes for us. I know you know I know Milwaukee. They think differently. Um, they utilize a lot of their guys. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see how the game plays out. But you know, right now, you know, uh, they're going to start Woodruff, um, who his last outing was really, really good. So we gotta, just got to be ready for Woodruff, and then be ready for whatever happens after that. So that was Davey Martinez earlier today discussing the decision to start Max Scherzer, the intensity that his team plans to bring for this wild card game. And earlier in the day, we also talked to Mike Rizzo, general manager. He talked about how the decision to start Max Scherzer was made a long time ago. Oh, we're just going to take it day by day. It's, uh, it, you know, game 163. It's it's a win or go home game, and uh, we've been we've been uh, that's been our mindset for about uh, four and a half months. And uh, you know, to, tomorrow's a game we have to win. Nice to have Max on the mound. Always good to have Max Scherzer on the mound. He's uh, you know one of our uh, one of our big four, and uh, we trust all of our guys, uh, all of our starters on the mound. But uh, it's uh, it's comforting to know Max on full rest and. Uh, he should be. Uh, he should give us a good performance. Mike, how how much do you or have you mapped out pitching in this game beforehand, given that you've got a bunch of weapons at the Well, we, you know, we've uh, earlier today we went over our uh, advanced report. Uh, we're, we'll put together, a, a, you know, our game time strategy, and of course, once the first pitch uh, arrives, you know, those plans go out the window, and it's uh, you know the manager's got to uh, got to manage the game the way he sees fit. Um, uh, I think that uh, you know we're in position to uh, you know to compete well against a you know a tough Brewer team, and uh, you know we look f we, you know we, we expect to win, and uh, and uh, that's what we're looking forward to. Is it conceivable that you could use Strasburg and Corbin and not see a regular reliever in this game? Well, we're you know we're gonna we're gonna do everything we can to win uh, Tuesday's game because there's with, you don't win Tuesday's game, there's no game Wednesday. So uh, you know we're going to do everything we we have to do to uh, to win them all. You've had winner go home games in the stadium before Cubs, Dodgers. How much can you kind of look back at those games and maybe apply it to, to this tomorrow? I don't think. Uh, I think each team is a different uh, a different challenge. I think e each season is is a different challenge, and uh, you know we're taking this uh, a game against the Brewers, you know, as seriously as we can. And uh, like I said, I like where we're at right now going into the uh, going into this uh, into the series against the Brewers. It's it's a win and go. It's a winner go home, and uh, we feel ready for it. And uh, you know we're, uh, we're we're comfortable with it. You determine how many pitchers you want to carry in the game. We have we have determined the roster going into uh, tomorrow's game, and uh, Davey will announce it when he feels fit to announce it. He feels like it. I know there's nothing you guys can do about this because the way the MLB schedule is. But does it feel strange that you play 162, you prove yourself over that, you win 93 games, and then your season gets decided by one game? Yeah, well, you know, play better during the season, win the division. You know, that's that's the way I think of it. You know, there's uh, you're rewarded for winning the division. Uh, it's it's a tougher road certainly to to go through the wild card, uh, uh, the go th to go into the playoff scenario as a wild card. But uh, you know, I think that uh, that's uh, as planned. And uh, you know, if you uh, 
it, it gives you real reason to win the division. Uh, we've, we've won four divisions and uh, haven't won the World Series in that route. And maybe, maybe this is the route to grind it out to the last game and, uh, and uh, coming into the playoffs hot and uh, not with a three or four day layover like we have in the past. Maybe this is the, is the, uh, is the road to success for us. And uh, like I said, we feel ready. We feel, uh, we feel rested. We feel uh, uh, ready to go. And, uh, you know, the Brewers are going to be a challenge, but uh, we feel up for it. Mike, you're going to have a different approach to universe this game where you guys first made through a bunch of different pitchers that you guys, you guys are going to rely on one starter kind of for the bulk of your innings. Uh, just kind of what, why does that just the starting pitching philosophy kind of work for you guys and what do you kind of think about the way that the game is going if you're going to continue to, to build around that strategy? Well, you know, the starting pitchers, it, it works when you have starters like uh, Scherzer, Strasburg, Corbin, and Sanchez. I think that's that's the key to our uh, our formula here. Uh, it's it's won us a lot of games over the last eight years. It's it's the uh, it's the way we've constructed our roster. And uh, you know, I, again, we we put a guy in the mound that gives us a chance to win each and every day. And uh, t- uh, tomorrow will be no different with uh, with Max on the mound. Was it an easy and obvious choice to go with Max for Game One, or, or was there some debate about using Steve? We we just dis- we discussed it uh, before our, fir- our our latest day off because we set up our, our rotation this way. Uh, we've got Max on on uh, on plenty of rest. We've got Strauss on full rest. We've got we've got Corbin that's available uh, on uh, on short rest, uh, and Annabelle Sanchez. So we're. Uh, we're uh, loaded and, and, and ready to uh, ready to compete uh, tomorrow. And uh, and Max is a you know Max is a guy that uh, thrives on big games. Uh, Strauss has been a uh, consummate professional in, in his in his uh, playoff in his playoff career. And uh, and you know Corbin is a, is a, an asset for us. So we have got three number one pitchers. Uh, we decided on Max uh, a while back. We set up the rotation that way, and uh, and that's that's what we're going with. And we couldn't we couldn't feel better about it. Uh, yeah, um, different route, but you know I think it's going to be a lot of the same stuff. You know our fans in uh, 16 and 17 brought it, and the uh, games we had at home, and um, you know, I think the energy has been great in the stadium. So uh, hopefully more of that tomorrow. Trey, Davey just said you guys are kind of taking this approach like game 163. Is that is that kind of a fair assessment? Yeah, um, you know I think it's it's a little bit of both. You know we know what's on the line. Uh, we know it's win or go home. At the same time, you got to do what you know what got you here, and uh, that's have fun, enjoy the game, and uh, play hard. And uh, you know, I think that's what we're going to try to do tomorrow. Obviously, this team is playing some great baseball right now, but do you feel like there's still another level to get? I don't know. I think uh, this last week we could play with anybody. Uh, I think we did a lot of good things in these last uh, you know six, seven, eight games. Moving runners, um, driving people in, getting on base, playing good defense. So, um, you know, I think the team that executes more is going to move on. How confident? How much confidence does it give you to know that you have Max Scherzer on the mound tomorrow night? Yeah, I think uh, you know that's always a, a you know a positive for us having you know a guy like him, a competitor like him, get on the mound, and um, you know we're going to need him tomorrow, and, and hopefully he can make those pitches like he, he normally does, and continue to uh, you know put pressure on those guys over there. Well, you heard earlier in the show, Davey Martinez said he's not going to put any pressure on his team. He's, he told them this is game 163. Don't think of it as an elimination game. Just think of it as another game. It's been his mantra, go 1-0 and all season long. He sat down with Alex Chappell earlier on in the week and discussed his mantra and how he's instilled it in this team. Davey, Tuesday night when you see the score of the Pirates-Cubs game, your team is about to sweep the doubleheader of that day against the Phillies. Take us through what was that like, the, the last eighth, ninth inning, as you realize you're about to punch your ticket to October? Well, yeah, I mean, um, getting to that, getting that last out in the ninth inning was all I was worried about. And uh, once we did that, I mean, the emotions were just all over the map. I mean, you know, excited, um, overwhelmed. Um, I mean, you just name it. But, you know, the fact that uh, we endured what we have all year long, and we got to that point was very well gratifying. And uh, I just, I, I just was looking at the players, you know, and the players' emotions and the smiles on their faces, and uh, it, it was amazing. And then to see it on the scoreboard, knowing that hey, we, uh, we're getting a chance to play in the postseason, um, it was amazing. When we talked to you on the field, that was some of the things that you you talked about. But why was it so emotional for you? Well, just think about you know. Uh, where we started, you know, and what these guys have gone through. You know, I, I, you talk about the injuries to Trey and Rendon, uh, missing Soto, um, Zim, you know, uh, 
And these guys fought back. You know, they fought back to come back and play. You know, when they, when they you know, when we were down, they wanted to play, and they played ever since. And uh, and the, ad the adversity. You know, I always say, you know, uh, adversity builds character, and and we have an unbelievable uh, bunch of guys that stuck together. Uh, they played hard every single day. I've asked them to do things that they probably weren't comfortable with, and um, and they did it, hands down. You know, like no questions asked. You know, there was never no finger pointing. Um, we just went ahead, and 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 like I said, you know, the biggest thing I listen to these guys talk about going one and zero every day, and it's it's a lot of fun. How did you build that type of culture? You know, for for me, it's just trying to simplify everything. Um, I really, I mean, I sat back here. A lot early this season, and try to figure out how do I, how do I just make things simpler for them so that they don't think of the overall big picture and where we're at. Because there was a lot of baseball left, and uh, and that's one of the things that I thought, you know, just staying in the moment and just go, hey, go one and another day. And if we can do that, you know, and consistently do that, who knows what will happen? And and and, and we did it. So you start the season out 19 and 31. On May 24th, you had a three percent chance of making the mm -hmm. postseason. <laughs> was there ever a doubt or how did you start to look at the rest of the season and think we're going to be able to turn this around? Yeah, you know, I always I said to myself, you know, if we get healthy, um, the, the biggest thing was our starting pitching. I said, man, our starting pitching is so good and they, they, and they were doing well. Um, that They'll keep us in the ball games. We just need to get healthy. I mean, we, we had a good enough team that if we just could get healthy and everybody comes back, we'll be okay. You know, I mean, it's it was a long shot. I understand that, but mm -hmm. we'd be okay, and we'll, we'll make this happen. I know it. I felt that in my heart, and, um, and sure enough, you know, everybody got healthy. We started playing better, uh, and we took off. You know, and, and uh, we we didn't look back. You know, we just kept pushing forward. Did you have a favorite moment from this season? You know, for me, um, uh, we signed Para. You know, we go to L.A. Uh, he joins the team. I put him into play. You know, he's batting fifth. And uh, we're down, and uh, he comes out and hits a grand slam. You know, we win the game. I mean, you know, I looked at that day as like, wow, here we go. You know, this we just got a new guy, he's full of energy. I said, this might might be our ticket. You know, so uh, and um, and we won two out of four games there, and it was, you know, it was it was good. And you know, and, and I said, this, you know, we're gonna be okay. A great turning point on July fourth. We talked to Gerardo Para after the game. He said, I promise you, if we keep playing good baseball, we're gonna make. The playoffs. We're gonna make the postseason. How did he get this team when he was signed? They've talked about his personality, his energy, but in what ways did having maybe a fresh face in the ball club help everyone also believe too? No, not so much the fresh, fresh, fresh face, but his energy, his 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 veteran veteran presence. He's been there. He understands what goes on throughout the course of a year, um, and he just had fun. You know, he was a guy that. You know, and he, he understood, you know, I lo he, you know, I love music, you know, so he'd play the music as loud as he can possibly be every day before the games, after the games. <laughs> every time we win, you know, he'd bring that celebration every day. Um, and he made it fun for the guys, regardless of winning or losing. It was fun. Hey, we got to have fun doing what we do. If you don't have fun doing what you're doing, no matter what you do, you better pick another profession. And, uh, and he, he believes in that. And, uh, and he got these guys to believe in themselves. The champagne celebration was really fun. What was it like celebrating with your ball club? <laughs> uh, you know, it's just like I said, it's just you know, for me, it's just watching the guys. You know, watching them enjoy themselves. They worked hard all, all year, um, knowing that hey, it, this is not over. You know, we still got a long way to go, but uh, to get to this point, you know, and just watching, looking at their smiles and watching them embrace each other, uh, that's what it's all about. You get ready for the wild card game, and talking with Patrick Corbin, he said. He's one of the few players on the team that has experienced being a part of the wild card game, what that's like. And he said, you know, guys that might be hurt, they're all of a sudden going to feel great. And you see Max Scherzer's intensity day in, day out. That's going to be everybody's intensity that one game. You've had experience with the wild card game. How would you describe it? What is it like? Yeah, you know, everybody, everybody's bought in. You know, every, all, like you said, all the pains, all the injuries, all the numbers, everything goes away that day um, and we're, you're all in it you know hey everybody's it's hands on deck you know everybody's got to be prepared everybody's got to be ready um, we started our preparations already you know we don't know who we're going to play uh, we got to cover a couple teams but um, we're getting prepared um, 
So we talked a lot about you know, rosters, we talked a lot about lineups, we talked a lot about uh, pitching. Um, so we're getting prepared, uh, and, and, and when we f figure out who we're going to play, then we'll be ready. What's going to be your message to the group before that game? Same as always, want to know today. <laughs> yeah, want to know. That's what it's all about, and it, it works. It works. Yeah, they, we, why change <laughs> now? I mean, like I said, I had guys are always coming up to me, they, let's go want to know today. I said, that's right. Davey, thank you so much. Keep uh, staying in the fight. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> Before we get out of here, want to remind you about our podcast. Myself and Bobby Blanco are the two hosts. And on the most recent Nationals episode, we talked about the Brewers, their strengths and weaknesses, and how the Nats can top them in the wildcard game on Tuesday night. That just about does it for our coverage here from Nationals Park. Don't forget, there's a special hour-long show, Nats Extra, as they get ready for the wildcard game tomorrow, starting at 8 o'clock on Masson. And we'll be here all day tomorrow from Nationals Park, so stay tuned to the Masson Nationals Facebook and Twitter accounts. That does it for Masson All Access, brought to you by your local authorized Mercedes-Benz dealers. I'm Paul Mancana. We'll see you later.